guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity, having a career in technology as well as work vlogs. And today we have a special guest, a Sui. Luca, I'm back at it again. <laughs> yeah, so basically today we decided that we could make kind of like a informational fun video, um, which is basically sharing about the perks for a software engineer versus cybersecurity. That's right. So I feel like one thing to start off with is that I feel like this is of course going to look different for bigger companies, tech companies, you know, other smaller companies. So take that with a grain of salt depending on, you know, whatever companies that you're looking at to apply for. So right now, as many of you know, it's in the middle of the pandemic still. So we are all working from home. So office perk is pretty much non-existing. But True. if we were to go back to the office, we can probably assume that we will have some free food, snacks, drinks snacks and drinks yeah so I would say those are some of the office perks of course you have like a game room for people to play some games pool table potentially of course <laughs> yeah like you know something Must like that and the uh, open areas for you to just walk around the office that's about it I mean those are some of the obvious perks what about you guys I feel like this is a challenge <laughs> um I mean at work if we're talking about perks like in the office like, I guess we have like coffee and tea, like most normal companies. But I think the main thing is just seeing people, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Perks. seeing your coworkers. And we would normally get to like get together and have lunch together in like one room. So the bonding time is definitely there. Yeah. Um, we do have like a snack corner that different people, like my coworkers and I, contribute to. But then I think there's also like a really small, like, piece of budget for engagements and stuff and events that we actually use to buy like monthly snack boxes mm -hmm. for our office so that's pretty cool we have snacks yeah um and i just have my own snack drawer so like at work the whole top drawer at my desk is just snacks wow. i mean by now they're probably expired which is oh, kind of no. sad yeah yeah at work i eat a lot of snacks so that is nice and then coding and mooching <laughs> yeah actually we do have like a game area kind of i think there's like foosball i don't know if there's a pool table i think there is but it's like a small little area um yeah. it's like part of the recreational room or like next to the little lunch eating area so yeah i think a lot of companies nowadays are getting more modern they are having some kind of thing to do at work um if you're taking like a break of coworkers or for coffee for sure you gotta like take that. those breaks yeah <laughs> can be working yeah long hours without a rest it's bad for your eye it's bad for your body make sure your fellow coders out there get up and move around i think one very big and obvious perk that we both have is just the ability to work from home which we kind of mentioned earlier company perks yeah because i mean there's a lot of companies out there and a lot of jobs in general that don't let you work from home so obviously yeah. we get to wake up five days a week log into work from our living room compared to having yeah. to commute and having to go in, in person so that's definitely a big perk and yeah it's a privilege save. yeah and i mean of course there are roles in tech where like if you're maintaining hardware or something you have to be in the office yeah so for sure it, it could look different yeah. yeah most infrastructure teams cloud house yeah data centers data centers yeah. there you go that's, that's why you're in cyber <laughs> <laughs> um, eventually we'll all be back in some kind of full-time mm -hmm. to hybrid to Maybe even permanent work from home, depending on what oh, company you work for. Full remote. That yeah, could be an option now. Are Companies are more open to full remote after the pandemic. So mm -hmm. that could be a perk. Just make sure if you're looking for roles and you want to work you know, from home or remote full time, then just make sure you're looking for those companies and yep. those jobs instead of you know having to yeah. decide on like a hybrid or something with your employer. Yeah, just because you're full remote doesn't mean you could work from another country. So when you are full remote, you still assign to like a location, especially a country. And I guess your employer expect you to be in that location, that country, because your salary could be very different from a different location. So that's part of the excitation. So there are chances where they could call you into the office and they expect you to be able to come within like a reasonable time. There are tax complications if you work abroad, for example. Yeah. So if you think you can work from anywhere because you're full remote, that may not necessarily be the case. So maybe you should discuss with your company, your manager to see what's like the appropriate standard. Yeah, there's definitely a difference between work remote versus work anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about pay. 
Pay. Which I know a lot of you guys on the channel are very interested in. Mm -hmm. Which I also made a video on cybersecurity salaries throughout like your early career, all the way through your late career, um, PhD, masters, everything like that. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Yeah, I would say SWE in general is a pretty well-paid, well-funded industry. So I wouldn't be worried if you're in SWE. Maybe right now you're already making a good amount of money relative to the years of experience. So I would say for my company, we have the base salary. And uh, of course, mm -hmm. we also get like stock options, stock grant. That's best thing over four years, five years, six years, depending on the contract. You only get portion of it after certain years, depending on how the vesting schedule works. So you get the stock, you get the base salary, and then some bonuses. The end of year performance bonus. That's pretty much how my total compensation is. For cybersecurity, it definitely really, really depends on your company. Um, but I do think the salary range, at least for starting, the base is definitely higher just based on, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere in the United States. Because if you think about it, most we start at at least the annual median income for most U.S. households, which is, I think, about 56K or something around there. Yeah. So most Swedes would actually at least start there. And for cybersecurity, maybe around there, but um, if you're working in like IT help desk or um, a call center or a data center, that might be a little lower, sure. depending on, you know, sure. yeah, cost of living. Yeah. But if you're entering as like a cybersecurity analyst or some kind of entry-level cybersecurity role, you probably will be starting at at least the equivalent. Yeah, equivalent. Yeah. I mean, most companies have a cybersecurity yeah. team. That's a good thing. The stocks and stuff, I don't think that's necessarily a huge definite <laughs> the bonuses i think would work the same at any company yeah. um they range depending on your performance a lot of companies nowadays are performance based incentives or salary based mm -hmm. or bonus based and it really depends on how big your team is and how many people you know you're splitting everything with and how big that bonus pool is <laughs> which looks different for every company yeah that really all depends but i will say that i have gotten a bonus <laughs> like the last two years of working and uh, i would say another thing that you have to consider is like other benefits for example health insurance um yes. hsa make sure you are maxing out that hsa is uh very good so they partner with other companies financial companies to give you to bring you like better loans or like better investment credits so you have to look into like the i, I mean you can call them perks just like benefits yeah. yeah technically that's all that is all part of your financial package so definitely look for a company that has they won't tell you benefits until you get hired pretty much yeah or you 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 got the offer letter they tell you yeah but another thing is just like the hsa and the 401k matches there are companies out there that do that i mean oh, yeah. i think 401k is like a pretty common match yeah. but hsa is a less common match but there are True. companies that do match that or give you some kind of incentive to start putting money in your hsa True. Yeah. and your hsa is just like a health savings account mm -hmm. so you can save money in there pre-tax yeah. and use it for anything health like pharmacies work um if you go to the cvs you can use your hsa mm -hmm. uh if you're buying something anything health related you can use your hsa yeah. so even on amazon nice. <laughs> they, they sometimes tell you yeah, hsa yeah. qualify so you could use HSA on Amazon. So it's a good way to save money. I love my HSA. And you can also invest it. So you can have an HSA investment account. Yep. And then any money that you're not spending. And max you can put in, I think, a year is like 2500 something like that. Like mm, 3000 3500 Yeah. I'll put it on the screen. Per person, whatever. yeah. Any money that you're not using, you can just put it in that investment account. Finance and you major. can... True. And then you can actually save it. You don't... You can pay back like 10 years later. There's no due date oh, yeah. to pay... Yeah your medical bills at yeah. a certain time. As long as you pay it upfront in cash now, um, you can pay it with your post-tax money. And then 10 years later, that pre-tax money yeah, is growing and then just reimburse it while it already invested for 10 years. So it's just so nice. Um, See, even though I, yeah, even though I, mean, I haven't yeah. used it that way yet, but you know, like if I had a big medical expense, that's what mm -hmm. I would do. So HSAs are definitely a huge plus. I think most companies have an HSA. I don't know if they're employer sponsored. Cause yeah. I think you can also just open your own HSA without an employer. But I will put that on the screen if that's yeah. facts uh -huh. or not. Yeah. Another thing to be careful is sometimes when you employer does match 401k, you don't actually get it until maybe you work for a year or two. Like oh, yeah, they tell true. you they match, but they may not actually match it per paycheck. They might wait till the end of the year. Those are some things to look out for. Sure, they might make their 401k sounds great, but if you leave within a certain time, you actually don't keep, mm. don't get to keep any of them. And another thing is, sometimes the longer you stay at a company, 
the more match they're going to give you. So yeah. they might say they match this amount, but that might be until, you know, after yeah. five years of working there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah. it all depends. You just need to read the fine print of your of course. Uh, offer letter. Well, let's talk about PTO. Yeah. Wait, how did you know? That's something that, like, I really <laughs> want to talk about. Like, yeah. PTO, PTO work flexibility. Flexibility, yeah. Like, I would off. say, like, my company, like, we just started and uh, the initial PTO amount for me in particular, it's only like about 15 days. So it's not like a lot, a lot. It's a reasonable amount. It's like average. But as you work, yeah. As you work more and more, I think once you reach five, six years, you start getting like 20, 20 plus. So mm -hmm. I think that's when you really get to enjoy a longer vacation and uh, PTO, for example. Because I always see like, for example, like my tech leads and stuff, like they're always on vacation. They that's have so nice. many days <laughs> saved up. This, Meanwhile, I'm just here coding and just like, damn, I wish I had my vacation days. <laughs> how about you? Wait, why does that sound so challenging? Like, you're like, okay, he has nine. How about you? How about you? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I have pretty good PTO. Um, I think it is industry standard. I will say that I do have some additional like days that aren't considered PTO that I can use um, for like personal days. For yeah, example. for like holidays. Like, um, if I have like Chinese New Year, for example, and I'm celebrating that, I can use that. As a day separate from my PTO, so it's kind of like a it's kind of like a formal PTO, I guess. Used for like formal events like graduations, cultural holidays, stuff like that. I do get like a handful of those per year, so that's been nice. Um, if I just have like a one-off instead of having to use a PTO day, which I normally use for my vacations that are like a week or two long. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm just taking one day, then I'll just use one of those more formal nice. days off. That's kind of it. I mean, sick days are pretty standard. Yeah. I would think most companies give sick days. I mean, some companies have unlimited sick days, which I mean, most some companies have uh, anyway. What's it called? Unlimited PTO too. You know? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm strongly when I hear unlimited PTO, it just raises my like, like tingly sensation. Like I'm just like, that's a bait. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I, I don't like it. Give <laughs> give a standard at least. Like say what's reasonable. Mm, give some yeah, examples nice. to make people feel more comfortable talking to their manager. And taking PTO. Don't just say I'm in the middle of PTO and then you have to talk to your manager about it. Like, what if your manager don't like you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is actually so true. Cause I was watching a video from this um, HR person and she was saying how companies basically do unlimited PTO because they know that employees will feel bad taking it yeah. and they'll actually take less than yep. the industry standard or what they yep. would have taken at like 15 you know, this, the yeah. average. And another thing is that um, usually when people leave their company, their accrued PTO days that they didn't use, the company has to pay them back for that sure. time that they earned but didn't use yet. So if they don't have those days, you don't have to pay them <laughs> those, you know, those unused PTO because yeah. it's unlimited. So yeah, it's just a way for companies to save money when an yeah. employee leaves the company. For sure. And to prevent them from using, yeah. you know, like the average PTO days yeah. that you were expected per year, so. For your fellow job hunters, <laughs> job seekers out there, just be careful when uh, when you apply for a company. It might sound great initially. Like I remember yeah. when I was in college, I'm like, damn, that sounds amazing. I want to do that. Yeah. But uh, I have friends who are at companies with unlimited PTO, and uh, it is challenging because you feel like you just recently asked your manager to take yeah, time yeah. off, and now you're asking again. But uh, yeah. Yeah, like when we travel with people who have unlimited PTO days, they're like. Oh, I don't know. I just asked for a Two days time off. off like a month ago. Like I can't ask again. It's just a double edged sword. Oh yeah, another big thing I would say like my company allow uh, us to carry PTO time from one year to the following year to a, oh, to a cap. Yeah. Some company let you do that. So that's something to consider. So maybe you want to stock up mm -hmm. some uh, PTO and take a longer trip. That, that's an option. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a good perk. My company does not let me do that. Um, so I have to use my PTO days by the end of the year or they expire But there are companies out there that let you roll over to a certain max yep. But still I've heard that even if I did save all of my vacation days for one year They don't usually like when you take them all at once anyway So yeah. there definitely needs to be some yeah. kind of agreement Exactly yeah, yeah, like if it's like towards the end of the year and it's holidays and nothing's happening and it's code freeze, sure mm -hmm. But if it's like in August and you're taking all of August off at, Like at the start of a quarter or end of a quarter that might be a little hard on your team to you know pick up everything that you left so yeah i would just you know be cautious about 
when you're taking those long PTO time. True. The work culture, projects, teams, responsibilities. I would say the work culture is pretty open. Everyone is really smart and uh, everyone works collaboratively and uh, also independent. So when you're working on a project, you might be discussing with like UX teams, other senior engineers, but once you actually dive in deep coding, it's independent. So like you're on your own. But if you have questions, concerns, of course you can bring up good help. But overall, I think it's a pretty well-rounded work style. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I can't really complain. I mean, I think the team dynamic is pretty good. It's very healthy. Like you have senior people on the team. You also have younger, newer people like myself. So it's kind of like you can learn from someone and then you can also contribute like new ideas, for example. So I would say it's a pretty well-rounded team. And uh, the team size is small, so that definitely helps. Everyone feel more connected. It's a mm -hmm. virtual world, so it's harder to do that for newer people who just joined. I think overall pretty good because we all had experience working with each other in person so we built that bond and the uh, fulfillment is definitely there. If you care about like a uh, end user product visibility for example that you can actually see the product being used by day-to-day -day users your job pretty fulfilling because you are doing something that other people are using enjoy and uh, you're constantly improving it. I would say kind of the same. The team dynamics definitely so for my current team I actually just joined about a month or so ago. I've never met my teammates in person, but also when we go back to the office, like my company, we're not necessarily in the same location with all of our teammates. Yeah, I don't think I'll, like I won't be in the same location as my manager. Like we'll still be doing these virtual calls. So I basically have never really met anyone on my team or my previous team actually um, in person. But I still think that our touch bases are still good with connecting. The work that we're doing is definitely very collaborative just in terms of needing a team effort. For example, we had a really big emergency thing come up. It was like an all hands on deck situation to get this thing completed. That dynamic is definitely interesting because I've never had a team where we kind of collaborated together. So that's definitely been an interesting dynamic to kind of learn. Sounds like fun. And then the fulfillment, I think if you're someone who's interested in cybersecurity, the fulfillment is going to be there <laughs> because, I mean, you're basically protecting people's information. I mean, you don't know if you're doing a good job ever, to be honest. That could be true. The metrics are you harder could, yeah, to define. You could be like measure. secure for 50, 100 years, let's say. But if one day something goes wrong, maybe <laughs> maybe this whole time you weren't doing a good job. Like, it's hard to say. Like, That's why mm -hmm. sometimes in cybersecurity, like, you have to be very open-minded to not having like quick recognition and yeah. be more accepting for that. So let's say you like implemented some kind of security control, you know, like in that first few months, like maybe you just didn't get any attacks. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't really tell it's working well until mm -hmm. later on, you know, so I mean recognition I think is still there even if those metrics take time because you, they know that you're still working towards them. Security though, it might be harder because you really only hear about the companies that get hacked. <laughs> you don't hear about the companies that are so secure and they're 200 layoffs. Used. The whole cybersecurity <laughs> department gone. I'm kidding, but... Uh, yeah. Because of that, like, usually when you hear about cybersecurity, it's bad things, like a company got hacked into, mm -hmm. but, I mean... They probably worked really hard. So. Yeah, they, they might have. It's and unfair. It's still, all it takes is one route in. I know. It's so it's, easy when you're the attacker. You can study yeah. everything and uh, figure out how to Because you have do it. so much time. You have all the yeah. time in the world to hack into someone's device. Like all it takes is one person, one like really low security application. I think that's about it. What do you think? Yeah, I think this was a very productive yeah. video. Let us know in the comments below if there's any perks that you think uh, we missed or you want to add to the list based on your company as a SWE or cybersecurity or any other role in tech. Uh, please let us know if you like this video by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe and start post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And be sure to give a thumbs up if you want to see more videos of the cybersecurity, I mean, of the, the software cyber engineer. cybersecurity <laughs> engineer. Uh, okay, yeah, that, I mean, I guess all software engineers are kind of cybersecurity engineers too, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, right, well, guys. thank you guys so much for watching, thank and you hopefully guys. we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!